Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel, so please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. One last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Tenth Man, the Adam Meakin, Sleeping Warrior, Flatsoid, Brian, Arwin, and a whole bunch of people in Discord, so welcome one and all. Hello. Hey, hey, hey. Good afternoon, everyone. Morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you may be. Any signs of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon, formerly known as the curve of the Earth? Not from Idaho. Sorry, uh, come Nathan, on, you, Nathan, you'd never be expected to see the geometric oh, horizon oh. because refraction obscures it. They claim it blocks boats and buildings with its physical nature. And they claim geometry yeah, but... of its physical nature. So their basis in claim is physical geometry, Anthony. Yeah, but you wouldn't be expected um... to see it, Nathan, because refraction can bend stuff from behind the uh, the horizon, so it would appear like it's flat, but it's actually refracted. You can't prove that terrestrial refraction exists. It's but... unprovable, technically. Okay. Terrestrial refraction, Arwen, would be 7 over 6R. So if you're saying that the line to the horizon is a refracted line that would be deviated from straight am i right curved curved or curved whatever well to acquire the geometry to apply this refraction that arwin mentioned terrestrial refraction seven over six of the radius you'd require geometry so obviously you're using an r value in your refracted value so yeah, to acquire said geometry you'd need a straight line to the horizon that would be called a tangent fundamental to the geometry do you understand that yeah but it's not always straight is it because it, it follows a curve a tangent in geometry is always straight anthony yeah but it, it, because it's subject to refraction it curves so it begins straight but it, it ends up being a curve no you don't understand a basic premise of geometry a tangent is straight end statement not bent by refraction it's a geometric term describing a straight line that meets this curve point in geometry and that is assumed to be the horizon in globe geometry requiring a tangent straight line anthony not bent not curved straight it's it it's tiny amounts of variation but i can concede that it's a straight line but it's it's curved really no. <laughs> I, 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 think what said, I, I think what Nathan is saying is that for there to be a 7 over 6 refraction, you need to have a, an R value uh, that matches that, or that is be, or for that to be based on it. Um, no, that's not what he's saying, actually. He's saying that terrestrial refraction as a concept is uh, unprovable because... It requires you to prove the geometry, which you then can't because you can't have straight lines visually anymore to prove that geometry. Spot it's on. like a paradoxical claim. Precisely. Yeah. It's a paradoxical claim that implodes upon itself when you assert that something with a geometric R value has no way of acquisition because you have no tangent line to acquire the R value. So it's, what was it? your word? That was beautiful, Owen. Paradoxical, precisely. Uh, I was being sarcastic, Arwen. I, I got what you were doing. Don't worry, you don't have to. You didn't have to explain that, Brian. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, he took the thunder away, Nathan. <laughs> that, that's Arwen's bag. Yeah, I was trying to do the same thing, but he did it faster than me. He got in there ahead of me. So. <laughs> I went on fire, man. That was really concise. Hey, Adam, by the way, I haven't heard from you. And hey, Paul. Afternoon, afternoon. I was going to chip in, but then Arwen pulled out yeah. Paradoxical, which summed it up nice. So, yeah. That is the crux. Yeah. The, the globe model dies because it suffers a paradox, which is to say that if you can't acquire a geometric tangent point at the horizon because all lines are bent, then you can't apply refraction with an R value that has geometry that needs a straight line. It's a paradox. It it that's what we got. it takes that much for us to formulate their argument into a point where it's paradoxical. Paradoxical is that the right word? Paradoxical for us to actually succeed yeah, in a win. Paradoxical, yeah. Yeah. yeah, paradoxical. So Could you see contradictory? To, we have to take their begging the question fallacy <laughs> and take take it to the to the extent that their argument becomes paradoxical in rebuttal. How mad is that? How how far have we got to go with these fundies? It's mad, isn't it? Right. Yeah, and it's not just self contradictory, Tony, because self contradictory just is like on the spot disproving itself. But this is like impossible to prove. I didn't say self contradictory. I just said contradictory. Self-contradictory would be <laughs> a circular reference, wouldn't it? You can't have contradictory and then self-contradictory because wouldn't the self be then contradicting the contradiction? What? <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> the is... the word paradoxical could be substituted or it could be, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, conflated with, um, uh, con oh, what's the word? <laughs> I've, just, I've just lost the word. Yeah, what's the word? Contradictory. <laughs> Contradictory, yeah. You can you can conflate the two words. It's not like force and effect, uh, cause and effect that ballers do with gravity. You can't conflate those two because they are opposites. But you can conflate um, paradoxical and um, contradictory. They are similar words. Similar and and or. <laughs> Let's not do that one. That's a <laughs> just, only conversation. Just for, just so there's a comparison. Right. So there's a an, an an accurate paradox. So the the idea in time travel that you can't kill your own grandfather would be a paradox, which is to say that if you went back in time and you killed the person that was to create your existence, you couldn't be in existence to kill them. So that's a paradox. <laughs> it's, it's an impossibility, a circular event that can't take place because one thing cannot then lead to the other thing happening. Well, this is the same. You can't acquire an R value to base terrestrial refraction on because you don't have a tangent. So their rebuttal to the black swan, which is to demonstrate beyond all certitude that we do not have a geometric horizon, and Anthony's rebuttal is to say, well, we wouldn't expect to see a geometric horizon, but it's absolutely required for geometry to have taken place because your refraction that you're coming back with has an R in it, and that's geometric, therefore needs a tangent. So it's a, a self-defeating argument. The globe becomes mathematically paradoxical or a mathematical paradox. You can't assert we're on a sphere. It's a mathematical certitude at this point. You can't have the maths they assert. It's been debunked six ways from Sunday. It doesn't have any perspective. It's taking place in a view that you can't experience with your own eyes because you see the side of your own head. It's, it's, it's been smashed. The R value can't be measured, can't be seen, only exists in the maths. These are quotes from Globers. How dead's it got to be in 2020? What's really interesting is that we, we we came to that point and we accepted that yeah you can't have one without the other it, it's a it, it's it, one contradicts the other it can't it can't be in existence but how many times did other people come come to that conclusion who worked in those fields and probably still do and just with that and other contradictions just the same although that is the biggest one and just said ah I don't know it almost work itself out and just well, ignore it. Well, I think they just ignored I, it. If I can add something to the whole thing, because I have been thinking about it, technically it's not completely unprovable. But hold on, it's only paradoxically unprovable through optics, specifically. That's where it's unprovable. But hey, if you could have an actual perfectly straight tape measure, uh, a ruler, physical, mechanical things to measure the geometry with then you could only after done doing that could you prove a terrestrial refraction type setup but 
I guarantee you that's not going to happen because he couldn't do that either. Do you want to know why? Physically a glove. He couldn't do that either. Do you want to know why? Why? Because as soon as you asserted that you're going to be drawing a measurement, well, your measurement is going to be a tangent line. You're saying, well, if I can physically draw a tangent line, as in by draw, I mean draw it out like a ruler in physicality to a point in the distance. But then you're 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 guilty of actually physical reification because you're suggesting that we adhere to the reification that Craig Fight the Flat Earth used, which is to say, if I assume, as the geodetic surveyors do, that the line I draw is a tangent line, well, what does that imply? Well, it implies the begging the question fallacy that is the assertion that you've got a curved surface that that line's going to meet. So you're automatically assuming that the ground you're going to draw that line to is curved because you're assuming that it's going to be a tangent when you physically make that line with a tape measure. So you're guilty uh, of... Uh, go on. But not entirely, though. I, I know your, I understand your point, but that is still relying on optics and then basically using presuppositions to calculate it all together. That's not what I meant. No, I literally mean testing the tangent get a lateral straight thing and see if it is a tangent the tangent what tangent the tangent the only the only tangent you're going to be telling me about is going to be the one that you assume is to the point where your line that you're physically drawing intersects the curved surface you're assuming is beneath your feet arwin right well you would be able to right that very wrong <laughs> Please, I have a really good point. Look, it's testing whether it is or not. So if you have a giant, measurably confirmed straight thing, giant, 100 kilometers, and then see if it's going to rest on a particular spot, like a tangent, or whether yeah. it's actually going to touch down. Oh, it won't. Hold on. Know. Let me just tell Owen about this image we've got called the black swan. <laughs> I know oh, that's Arwen, a lot easier to do that. Can I just check, Arwen? I agree with what you just said. Whose burden of proof is it to prove that point? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Globers. They're Correct. the ones that are in need of this actual tangent to happen. No, they just presuppose it. Well, they'd have to physically measure it if they because you can't you can't derive it from optics. That's a tangent paradox. To, tangent to what? Power. 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 Curve. Curve of Power. what? The tangent Power. to what? Where is he bringing this tangent? Is it, yeah, he's, he's, he just what Arwin's done very cleverly there, Brian, is agreed with me and then carried on making the same point like his agreement, which completely obliterates his point, is somehow irrelevant. That's what ballers also do, I might add. So he's he's gone, yes, right. That was where I interrupted and went, wrong. No, we're not going <laughs> to assume the ground beneath us has got a curved surface, Arwin. That's a presupposition that you're then proposing we measure based on your presupposition. And no. And not we. Not we, them. They got to do it. Um, if they want to bring on. some proof to their claim. Weasel. Now he's blaming them. It's you verbalizing it. You take the... No, nah, I'm only joking. Yeah, it's okay. all their fault. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah? What is it? Any um, more for any more on... Plain Go on, plain sorry. Geometry. It's quite in plain geometry, do parallel lines cross? In, in plain geometry? Euclidean geometry? Do parallel lines cross? No, they're parallel. <laughs> So, there we go. There we go. What? Uh, no I, still, I think. I, I, I still. Sorry, Anthony. One second. I, I'm still confused as to where exactly you're bringing this uh, tape measure. Alan. Me? I'm not. I don't yeah. have that tape. It's just like this is the super, super, super remote conception of if they really want to get out of this paradox based on the visual conclusion of terrestrial well, refraction then they have to get really physical it's it's almost and it's intangible yeah. and well, we already know that the end result of such an empirical more empirical test would result in that of course it's not tangent of course but, you, but yeah but where they really where are they bringing it to where are they bringing this to where are they bringing the end like they say okay they start with it on solid land where do they bring the end of the tape to? Well, it wouldn't be a tape. It would have to be a solid, non bending That's not what he asked. Physical. That's yeah. not what he asked. Well, I don't know. Yeah. It's not going, what I asked. I don't know, across the desert of the Sahara and over the oceans. To I what know. point? That's not what I asked either. To what point? That's what he's asking. Where they're taking it to. Where's the where's the point where the tangent intersects the curve you're assuming, Arwin? That's what he's asking. Well... 
God, this is all taking it very literal, but <laughs> yeah, I know yeah, it, yeah. it would come down to you would rest the thing on, yeah, somewhere and then just see. Oh, the yeah, somewhere. Over this. Oh, God. <laughs> right, stop. Right. Height. What Arwen is describing, if you're a baller and you're a weasel that's changing we and they around so he can shift blame. Right, if you're not that guy, then the it in this example is the horizon, reified by mathematics inside view to be a tangent point. But this is the horizon, right, Owen? No, 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 no. That's yeah. useless. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, horizon yeah. is always optical anyway. They have already, it's already admitted that yeah, you've even disclaimed if this. Earth or a globe, it's, it's the really horizon is optical. But yeah, the point is, it's not, you've it's disclaimed that they said not optically. Hold on, Owen, 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 Owen. You disclaimed at the beginning, not optical. So, yeah, th th this is the end, right? Please, God, let this be the end. What? Not optical. You said at the beginning you couldn't do it optically, specifically. Now you're saying, yes, yes. but that would be optical. Right, okay, so that's the end then. Thank God. Right, yeah, indeed. Yeah, optically, terrestrial refraction is a dead end. You can't prove terrestrial refraction through optics because it's, it's, it's paradoxical. It's impossible. You would... It doesn't exist, I'll tell you right there. But if it would exist, the only way to prove it is physically, not through optics. And that's what I tried to describe. And that can't be done because that would require... Speed, of course, uh, because let me just conclude no then. Yeah, and that well, wouldn't be that's possible. That's why Sly Sparkane's looking down the... Because Sly Sparkane's trying to do a water test where he looks down the length of the water tubes and says that I can optically determine whether or not the Earth is fallen away from the tubes or not. And Arwen's saying you can't do it optically. You have to measure it, physically measure it to see whether or not it actually is. Because obviously the, your perception of optical horizons and optical effects is perceptive. It's not accurately well, measured. That's the point. Well, uh, but, yes. uh, but Riley, you forgot. Sly thinks specific perspective has nothing to do with optics. <laughs> yeah, he thinks it's an art but, custom, doesn't he? What Arwen <laughs> is stating, Arwen, if I'm not correct, is that you're stating establishing a horizontal and seeing where the physical curve falls away from the physical horizontal what physical falling. curve the one he's assuming <laughs> the, the one he's assuming is that is that the physical curve? the one he assumes when he describes the line he draws out to be a tangent yeah yeah but look nathan this is all hyper hyper conceptual because i'm yeah this, this, <laughs> It's hyper-concept. It's like, if the Earth turned out to be a globe after all, which there's no evidence for, really. Can I address Then the only Arwen way to do it would be like that, because you can't, you can't arrive to terrestrial refraction. To, you can't prove terrestrial refraction through optics it, because it makes geometry impossible. Right. So, you need to talk to Bave. Can I address a question to Arwen? Arwen is or ace. Can I just say that? Arwen is ace. He's amongst the best people in the world, and this is why developed a very heated conversation out of this he's on our side how many other people can do that hey by the way sleeping warrior hi hi hey, can, can i ask a question mm -hmm. on this you say that as just come in? we established in the pre-show that anthony's an auto hoaxer <laughs> what? oh we found that out in 1984. <laughs> he's joking out and ignore him okay we move on is there any more on this uh Evidence yes. of Earth curve. I want to ask a question, I think. Go ahead, yes. Tan. Go ahead. Tan for then I'll have a go. Yes. Okay. Actually, uh, if I can have Adam role play with me, that'd be great. Then I'll just hand it off to him to finish. So, Adam, it, the ballers claim the Earth is a sphere with a radius, correct? Am I role playing a baller here? No, just facts. Just okay. Yes. Facts. And they give us a number for that uh, radius of 3959, correct? Yeah. And with, when that established where the curve would begin from the observer's height, uh, if a measurement was being taken of any type. Yeah. So when Al Biruni did his Al uh, when Al Biruni did his uh, test back in the day, and they get the geometric horizon from that, it would have to match what we know about the Earth, the circumference, the radius, it couldn't be any further than the geometry would allow, correct? Yeah. Yeah, certainly so by that. The, well, isn't he defining the geometry there? 
Well, if 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 you can just for the sake of my question, if 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 geometry is standalone and measurements are what they are, and a straight line is a straight line, and it meets the curve, that's where the earth curve should begin. That's where the arc of the sphere should begin and it should block the bottom of boats and buildings if we were a sphere, correct? Yeah. When it doesn't do that, and you have evidence that it's further than the 1.22 miles of the one foot observer height, what does that do to the claim that Earth is a sphere with a radius of 39.59? Yeah, it invalidates it. Thank you. I'll pass it over to you. Mine was just more to come on, on, on what Arwen was saying. If, if we allowed Arwen's big long line um, and stuck another line, line parallel to it that we knew was parallel, um, would they look parallel optically? No. No. No, you would have to actually go to every part and then physically confirm that it is parallel, that the distance asking. is the same. Every so part. Asked, would it look no, it would converge. Yeah. So drawing straight lines in on a picture would seem to be denial of perspective. If we know two parallel lines will converge, then why are we looking at pictures like that? Um, again, it's not taking into account perspective or size reduction at distance. So, to, to, to clarify your question, you're asking, why would we observe or compare a photograph or something we actually observe with our own eyes to a mathematical reification that takes that and puts it into a side-on perspective where we see our own head and parallel lines remaining parallel? when yeah. in reality they converge with optics, which is what's being used to compare in these maths. Why would that be done? Is that is that your question? Yeah, exemplified by, I would say, train tracks. That's probably the best one. So you why, why would they show train tracks extending left to right with no angular size reduction or convergence? Uh, it's to hijack that effect we call perspective and call it Earth curve. That's why. Well... For a hundred or so years, aren't they? <laughs> Anybody else got anything with this longest session we've had so far today on Earth Curve housekeeping question? Twenty-three minutes. Yeah, but Nathan, you did ask, was there any evidence of um, geometric horizon? And the answer that ballers always give is, well, you wouldn't expect to see it, and that's how we have to address it. It's not like we're we're not as refined as what we need to be, but we're working on it so that we get a really refined concise answer but that is their current comeback so unfortunately i'm just reciting the baller's argument so that the audience can listen okay and hopefully realize that it's very convoluted yeah but their comeback hold on hold on let it's me just, just get clarity excuse. again hold on Owen. sorry you, you can put your two penny with it in a second let me just get clarity you're saying that the comeback to this argument that we can't see it my question rather any evidence of a geometric physical sphere edge horizon is the comeback that we can't see a geometric horizon. I just just clarify this for the audience also then. The geometric horizon that I'm asking for evidence of and we're told we cannot see only exists in the maths and we wouldn't expect to see is Earth curve. So we're told we wouldn't expect to see Earth curve and we're told Earth curve only exists in the geometric maths. So the rebuttal is, we wouldn't expect to see Earth Curve. That's what you're telling me. Yeah, of course. We wouldn't expect to see it, Nathan. It's mathematical. So when we're, we're told not that... We're expected uh, to see the thing that blocks things. Yeah, that is their comeback. That's what they say. Just, re just repeat that, Adam. Hold on. I was going to say it, but you repeat it, Adam, please. So, yeah. so we're not expected to see the thing that's blocking our obstruction of things. Correct. That's concise and very unclear Thank so you. we don't see the earth curve they tell us we see blocking things also a paradox correct we don't see it because of refraction nathan so we don't see the thing that blocks boats and buildings because of refraction 
no, we don't see the geometric one. We see the optical one that we perceive in our... Because we live in a geometrically three-dimensional world, but it's affected by refraction, Nathan, and that flattens it all out to make it look flat. It's not and really the refraction, flat, curved. And, and as we discussed earlier, the refraction is 7 over 6 of the radius, or a derivative thereof, and that would require the geometric radius. Therefore, yeah. necessitates a straight line to this point, the horizon that you're saying is bent. Also yeah. a paradox. Yes. I'm, I'm so, totally okay with that, Nate. So to put it mildly, if I was a globe believer right now watching, I'd be under the apprehension that we had mathematical certitude, that's abstract descriptions, for the assertion that there's a sphere beneath our feet, when in reality it's paradoxically impossible to have a sphere beneath your feet because you can't derive an R value to then claim refractions bending the horizon with R that cannot be derived. No, Nathan, you don't understand. You don't understand that refraction can do whatever we want it to do, and it can get over your paradox because we can just apply a bit of maths and it's done. But their acquisition of the R value is done outside of maths in the reality of our world, and their idea that the horizon is a physical sphere edge called Earth curve that can be measured. So if it can only be done in the maths, cannot be measured in reality, then this notion that we're on a sphere is debunked. Does light conform to shapes? You just don't understand, Nathan. <laughs> I think what's happening... Sorry, Nathan. Does light conform to shapes? Conform to shape? I'm going to say no. Then how the refraction? It doesn't matter. They can't even prove that the refraction is there in the first place because they have no way to get the geometry they need through optics. No, they have to physically the measure the radius now in order to establish terrestrial refraction. Yep, at some stage you've got to measure it, and you can't measure that which cannot be measured and only exists in maths. Bye-bye, globe. It was nothing but a reification of a philosophy to understand the movement of stars. It's pathetic we all fell for it. It's our own fault. Any yeah. more for any more? So, so what's, to that, what's the happening point, here is... Sorry, I, I leave you go. Yeah. So just to conclude the point, when you ask for evidence, physical evidence or real-world evidence of the geometric horizon, look how much of a clusterfuck it is. You can't get to a conclusion because the ball has always... Ripped. Just revert back to refraction to explain it's, it's the nonsense. They just That's it. But they just don't accept that it's optical and it's not real. And they just won't ever accept it. It's just silly. It doesn't change the paradox. So what's happening... Go, Brian, go. Sorry, <laughs> I have coming at the wrong times. What's happening here is the reification of a mathematical equation um, and the claim that this is blocking things. Uh, and when this is disproven, it's backed up by a secondary mathematical equation, the space that light, that is dependent on the or of on the on the reality of the original mathematical equation. So they have two maths equations. The second one is backing up the first one, but the second one is dependent on the first one. And the second one is used as a defense when the first one can't be proven. Yeah, it's what QE fondly calls a double your trouble begging the question fallacy. So they beg the question of R, and when you debunk their geometry of R, they say, well, if I assume 7 over 6 of R, it's like, well, you've already assumed R, we've debunked it, now you're just inserting it into a refraction value that utilizes the thing we've debunked. Double your trouble begging the question fallacy. Spot on, Brian. Again, that was 30 minutes on earth curve no 30 Five minutes on geometric horizon i'm going to retitle the show earth curve i'm not going to give the show <laughs> the numbers are... isn't it funny that how much of a complicated argument it is just to us because that thing that they all used to say galileo shown that with a telescope that boats went over the horizon the minute you start asking what is the horizon it becomes really messy really quick. Why does it take 30 minutes if we got the black swan? Because of Arwin. Justify why it's not the horizon, but we can think of it as the horizon. I blame Arwin. <laughs> yeah. Me? <laughs> Arwin's yeah, asking you a big tape measure. I, yeah, you, I was your just tangent making it real. Assuming. Not, yeah. not Earth curvature, though, but, but like, how would you do that? Well, because the ballers are completely lost in their own nonsense. You know, they don't even know what they're doing wrong anymore. They just got used to asserting nonsense all day long and think that's okay. 
Yeah, technically, more... Arwen. Sorry, I'm go just on, saying, go. technically, Bev Troy thinking is doing what Arwen is talking about, as he's going to establish a horizontal. Right. He's got, the thing is, I see that as futile. He's got Euclid on his side. What more does he need? These are fundamental principles that he's dealing with. And he's going to use the principles that they're based on, the axioms that these are based on, to prove that they're true. Well, they're already laid down as axioms. Yeah, the problem is the ballers don't understand that it's their burden to prove that the Earth is a tangent to a curved surface when, you do, when you're doing your obs observations, but because they don't accept that it's their burden to prove, and they think that we've got to disprove it, somehow they reverse the burden of proof, not that we prove our arguments, but now we've got to disprove their argument in the first place, even though they've never demonstrated it to be true. They just accept that that's the way it is. So it's like a burden of proof, or a burden of proof reversal, but we're not actually proving that the Earth's curved. We're disproving the claim that they believe because they demand that it's already established. It's ridiculous. Yeah, they demand that we accept that they will automatically beg the question. Yeah, yeah that just leads to a pummeling though, doesn't it? <laughs> the, the ballers are like inmates in an asylum who think they're running the asylum. The, the, the problem they have is they want to keep on doing what exactly what Anthony said, because that means that the onus is not on them to prove non-Euclidean geometry. Because if Correct. they have to, they need non-Euclidean geometry. And, and if they can't show that in reality, then they have to send, the, send that ball straight back to our side to somehow disprove you know, their claim. And to be honest, it's really worth um, – when they say – when we talk about Euclidean and non-Euclidean geometry, right, to the normie, the average normie, including myself, when someone says non-Euclidean geometry, what really does it mean? And it's not, it's not really something you can describe with words very easily, but if you go online and go onto YouTube and type in models of non-Euclidean geometry, you can see people that are walking around in virtual worlds where they've created themselves to demonstrate how non-Euclidean geometry can be conceptualized, but obviously does not work in real world. And what I mean by that is, for example, a guy walk past a window in his three, in his like, imagine you're in first person mode and you're walking around in a room and you walk through, walk past a window and you see on the other side of the window, there is a scenery. And then you see that there's a door approaching that's going to let you out into that area. So you go to the door and then you the, you don't realize that that area is not the same. So you realize, hang on a minute, there's something wrong in my head there. You go back to the window to see what was outside the window. And then you realize that some hawky porky is going on because what's out the window should be the same as what's out the door. But when you go to the door in, in, in further on in the game, it's completely different. And that's an example of non-Euclidean geometry. It completely doesn't work on the, on the, on the, not on the real world. It's like complete bullshit, but that's what you've got to understand is non-Euclidean. So just go to YouTube, type in non-Euclidean geometry modeled, and then just look at how they demonstrate it. And then you can see that they're arguing for non-Euclidean geometry as though it's acceptable. And you realize it's complete hogwash. Well, that's insanity. Well, that's that's totally insanity. insanity. Like... Sorry, go on, Neil, you go first, in. then Brian. Go ahead, Neil. I said then that's insanity. insanity. Total insanity. Indeed. Yeah, it's insanity. Go ahead, Brian. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, sorry, Neil. Um, Bev laid that. Well, I was speaking about Bev when I was speaking about it there some while back, weeks ago. And the best way to lay that out is the longitude lines, because they are non Euclidean geometry, because they're not parallel. They're meeting at two ends of a ball. So the latitude longitude grid, especially the longitude lines, are non Euclidean geometry. And that's the very thing they can't prove. So, about that geometric horizon, yeah, there is no evidence for it, Nathan. you just got to basically believe it and accept it, regardless of any evidence to the contrary, and then accuse anybody and ridicule anybody that dare question your religious belief. That's basically the position. Okay. Are no, I don't clear? do that. I, I tend to laugh at people that come here and say, well, I'm automatically right. I know it's a sphere. Therefore, when I assert my begging the question fallacy and assume that it's a sphere when I give my example, I just point out that that's begging the question and then laugh at them. <laughs> just mention the for me I, it's a bit of a hijack in this um, or, or an adopting as if the terms Euclidean and non-Euclidean relate directly to the earth um, they're just mathematical 
different ways you have to do things. Non-Euclidean, when I did it, it wasn't anything to do with um, the shape of the, the Earth. It was just how you calculate a point or a place when that place is on a... It can be a ball. It can be different different shapes as well. But do, do you know what I mean? That, that involve ours, our values. So it, it, it was... It's, it's intrinsically linked to the R. The, the issue, that's what those two terms mean for me, but it's kind of, to me, like being hijacked as if the term non-Euclidean validates the ball. And I think that's what they, what they yeah, fail that, that to is do. What yeah. that, that is what they're doing. They're trying to use non-Euclidean geometry to validate the ball. But when you see non-Euclidean geometry modelled out, you instantly realise that, that that's nonsense because it's it's like spokey dokey in the sense that it's how you'd imagine being on drugs in the seventies or whatever because it's like it, it doesn't fall it doesn't follow naturally it's 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 it, it, it's unnatural when you see it modelled out. Spokey dokey well, are giving away they're... free in cornflakes packets and they were attached to the spokes of your bike and made a ping sound as they fell down. That's what Nathan was trying to say earlier, is they're using this non-Euclidean to make straight be curved, but, it, but you've got to have a, like a tangent is a straight line. So they've got to curve it somehow. Well, no, they uh, just assume it. I don't know. Uh, no, they, they can they can't, they can't, you can have uh, that curve on Euclidean. You can't. Um, it's, go on, it, that's know. two-dimensional. Um, so you can, you can have it in there, but... It's more about moving to a different point on that surface of a ball, for example, that is when you bring Euclidean, non-Euclidean. But don't they bring it in when they want to say just, straight is curved? No, it's you just a way of a assuming. In you, no, 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 I'm not saying you can't. I think that's a shape. Circle is a shape, but that's okay. But aren't they trying to say straight is curved, and curved is straight? Yeah, that is what they're saying. Yeah. Straight is curved and curved is straight. Well, you can't do that. That's a violation of the law of non-contradiction. <laughs> yeah. You can't do things that, at that, one time. That is literally, in a nutshell, what they say. Straight is curved and curved is straight. And um, depending on what they need at the time, they'll flip between the two interchangeably to basically justify their position. Well, that doesn't justify the position. It conflates and confuses and deceives. That's literally what's happening. Yeah, but, 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 to, to say curved straight, it, it, if they are then trying to conflate that as if to say that that is what, non-euclidean geometry says that that isn't the case non-euclidean is just a way of calculating um the rate of change of these x and y and z coordinates which are very simple in euclidean because it has to take into account the r so that's all it is it doesn't justify it and it certainly doesn't transmute a straight line into a curve line when you say oh it's non-euclidean that doesn't what it means to me that's not yeah, I'm not sure I agree, I'm not sure I agree with that. If, if, if you just go to Google and type it at uh, YouTube and type in non Euclidean geometry modeled and then look at how they point. express it, I, I, that Adam, explains I'll everything. Sleep well, they're saying it, it's only a model. What it's Adam's not trying to say is representation of reality. It's just a way of measuring something. And I'm trying to say they just use it as a justification to beg the question. So to justify why they've got a tangent to begin with. They can use that as a justification. Now, Adam's saying just because there's a method doesn't mean that it applies in this instance, even though they say it's applicable. That's all Adam's saying. Adam, you know a cylinder uh, of equal dimension all the way through, that has a radius at any point through that because yeah. it's a cylinder. But it also has a, f a flat edge at the top, let's just say, or a length. Is the ballers, they work within a cylinder, don't they? Because they're always talking about the curve that's out in front of us, but they never can deal with anything left or right. It's always flat. So that, oh God, man, this is going back. But for me, I would use Euclidean geometry to calculate all my positions there because there isn't a third component making, yeah, it, it, you can break it down. And But if you were to do it on a ball, it's just impossible to try and calculate, you've got to come off the ball to calculate, which is why you use non-Euclidean. It's just a, a method of complex calculation that you use if you're on a ball, and you'd only use it if you're on a ball. But if you are on a ball, you have to use it. because There it is. Say it again. Say that one more time, please, Adam. 
if you are on a border, you have to use it. You have there to. it is, a justification. Well, I automatically assume we're on a ball. Therefore, that's what I've got to use, right? So it's just, as I keep trying to interject, a means of justifying their assumption that they've got a curved surface to draw a tangent to. It's just a means of justifying the begging the question. And if you ask them, they'd say, well, I already know it's a sphere. It's so ingrained into them. That's all it is. Exactly, Dave. Right, and it's very funny how that works out. Basically, they presuppose it has to be a sphere, then they draw everything, all the methods and all that, the systems, they draw it in, because if it were a sphere, they would have to. It's not, but they're still going to use it because they presuppose it's a sphere, and thereby fooling outsiders that aren't too well aware of all of this that it actually is a sphere because, hey, they're using this and they, you would need to on a sphere, right? And that's kind of part of the trick too, the bluff. Right, but that's where the black swan destroys that presupposition because we ask them, in your presupposed sphere, what's the radius? They say 3959. And then we applied that number. And at 1.22 miles, it should be there in the black swan picture, but it's not. So bye-bye. That, that didn't add anything to my point, but yeah. I wasn't trying to add to your point. I was, I was making a greater point overall. They are presupposing everything. Fine, go ahead. Until you prove it, it's still going to be in the category of a presupposition. So prove it to me. What's your radius of this thing that you're trying to prove? They'll say 39.59. So, well, let's just see where that earth curve should start then at one foot observer height. It will be at 1.22 miles, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's go check it out. Well, it's not. It's yeah, well it over is, 10 miles. It is 10th, but you can never see it because of refraction. No, no. We saw it in the black swan picture. Earth curve. God, that's, Tony, don't start from the beginning again. That's what they do. Earth, Earth, it's Earth, Earth, five Earth. minutes so far. I said you so the you. horizon is Earth curve. No. I, I, to be fair, I'm more than happy for this to go on. Yeah, drill it into a Mantony. What at this point a Globa would do is then make the claim again. Well, refraction. What based on R that you can't acquire geometry for, leaving you with a paradox, Anthony. More than happy to highlight that ten more times, Arwin. Okay, okay. I guess this is the uh, the housekeeping question number one show. Uh, it's turned into that. Yeah, I re I've re retitled the Earth Curve. So yeah, it seems, certainly seems that way. I, right. I don't mind. I'll, I'll move on with the housekeeping questions if this dries up. No, this is very good. I like it. We've got, you, you've got the best line in this show so far, Arwin. You know, paradox has not been uttered in this regard, but it is absolutely the most accurate description of what they have. You can't get an R if you haven't got a tangent. You can't assert 7 over 6R if you can't derive R. If it's all being used with 7 over 6R, refraction, because that's what's explaining why the horizon's moved. Therefore, no R. Therefore, can't be applied. You go round and round and round, all with it leaving Earth as a sphere dead. <laughs> so it's a yep. paradox. It's a beautiful word. Right, yeah. Well, you know, Listen. you guys kind of gave me that idea by making me realize at first that, oh, wait, if the horizon is refracted, then you have this donkey dick tangent, then the geometry didn't work out anymore. Well, that's been kind of unveil unveiled now in the last two weeks or maybe longer. And it's just sitting on that. It's like, yeah, but isn't that kind of like a paradox? And yeah, My the more I listen to it, the more, yeah, it really is a paradox. So yeah, this was, it was just time to actually use the word now. Perfect. Go ahead, pick Rick. Okay, so I yeah. would like to correct some statements. First of all, um, the tangent line, meaning the distance to the horizon, is not the way that you determine the radius value of the Earth. That, not at all. Never, actually. That's not how you measure the radius of the Earth. And therefore, you claim uh, that you can't, have an, uh, can't measure an R if you don't have the tangent line. Uh, or can't observe the tangent line optically is complete and utter bullshit. Secondly, the uh, no, 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 secondly, firstly, not hold at on, all. no, don't go it's on. It's not secondly. at all derived from secondly. the radius of the Earth. It's not secondly. It's, let's it's, just address your first point. So you've just spewed out that it's not the way you measure. Now it's going to get addressed whether you like it or not. So have you never heard of Al Biruni? 
Yeah, what did he do? What do you tell me? You're saying you tell her face. What did he do? Saying that's what not he how did. you measure the tangent. That's precisely what Alberuni did. It's documented, well documented. Really? Yeah, that's what he really? did. Really? What did he do? What did he measure? Can you can you tell what he measured? Yeah. You say the dip angle what to the horizon, which he presupposed was a physical huh? sphere edge. And you're talking through me. Yeah, just suck on my balls. Yeah, he's claiming to draw a straight line to the physical horizon to derive R. Precisely what you said isn't how it's done. It's documented as being done by Al Baruni. What did he measure? Yeah, my balls. Tell me how they taste. Now ask me a question. Yeah, so Al Baruni did it precisely that way, documented it in the historic account of how R was derived by Al Baruni by doing the very thing you've said isn't how it's done. No, that's just you getting teabagged with the historical facts of how R was derived by Al Baruni. And it's a flat earther doing it to you, Pickle Rick. Calm down, Nathan. Calm down? What, while I squat on your face? Yeah, Al Baruni did the very thing you said isn't the way it's done even though it's documented in history as having been done by Al Baruni in the very way you say it isn't done. Making you a fool. Making you a moron who's being humiliated by me, the flat earther, who understands your own historic account of how R derives than you do. Okay, Nathan, are you done? What, done teabagging you? I can spend all day doing this. I love it. This is what I do for a living. It's ace. Someone comes in who's a fundy globe believer and tells me, no, you don't need to draw a straight line tangent to a horizon to drive R. And I come back with, why is there a historic account of Al Baruni doing just that? And you ask me if I'm done. What, done teabagging you? No, mate. I'm absolutely pummeling you. Al Baruni. Okay, Al Baruni measured it. Yeah, Al Baruni measured it. That's right. What, what, with a tangent line to a physical horizon. But you've just said that's not how it's done. So you're wrong. To, to the horizon. Yeah, so you're wrong then. That is how it was done. Okay. No. Not okay. You asserted the opposite. He did not measure... He did not measure the distance to the horizon. This was Sorry, not he used a straight the, line and that, to the horizon that was my statement. in contradiction to what you claimed. And now you want to babble on about him not measuring a distance. My statement was that the, the distance is not used. Sorry, you said not a tangent, not a straight line tangent. Yeah. Yeah, he did though, didn't he? And, uh, and he did. That's precisely what he did. So again, flat earther teabagging globe head as he mutters and stutters around his incorrect assertion that that's not how things are done when you measure the geometric R value, even though it's documented as being done by Al Baruni. <sighs> yeah, oh, a flat earther's nuts in your mouth. That's what you do. Al Baruni is the only way to measure the, the, the radius of the Earth. Uh, what with a straight tangent that you can't get because it's all refracted? That leaves you with a paradox, mate. Yeah, take us through it. No, it doesn't. If you if you have a proper understanding of science, then it doesn't. Oh, really? Uh, oh. <laughs> is that your comeback? No, no. Nathan, but if you understood it. science. Take you through it, Nathan. And therefore, you are not able to learn That's it. not science, buddy. That's measurement. Yeah, that's an ad hom. You don't understand? Wowee. Excellent rebuttal. No, 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 I'm not saying you don't understand. I'm saying you're talking through me instead of listening. Yeah, you told me that you don't measure with a straight tangent to the horizon. Then I pointed out that that's exactly what's documented in history by Al Baruni and that exact method, making you wrong. And what, you're going to tell me that I'm not listening to you? Well, no, what I'm actually doing is pummeling you. I, I said we don't need the geometric horizon to determine the radius of the Earth. Yeah. Oh, well, Al Baruni did. <laughs> no, he didn't. Uh, that's precisely what he did. Strictly speaking, he still uh, what he uh, what he observed optically is is still not necessarily a geometric horizon. Not necessarily. That's how he derived R. That's geometry. So you don't understand geometry. So you're just a retard. Why am I having this conversation with this retard? So you don't understand what geometry is by your last statement. You measured the drop between the horizon and level, and since both were determined optically, both were in by the same refraction and therefore it can. So you muttering about what he did is to describe what you said isn't how you do it. 
Wow. Eight, and he gets pummeled that, that was just my that, that was just one hits. of my statements though you you do realize that right yeah and it was wrong then i took what, it to pieces he... systematically to determine the radius of the earth right yeah he used a straight line to the geometric horizon that he assumed and then derived an r value that's what he actually did you said that isn't how it's done though yes yeah so you were wrong yeah, it's a bit. It's yeah, so you were wrong. Not yeah, but moving on, you were wrong. That is precisely how it's done. It's claimed to be done that way, but it would require a straight line called a tangent. Now, according to all the fundy morons who come here, we wouldn't expect to see a geometric horizon. Uh, well, then Al Biruni can't draw a straight line to it. That leaves you with a paradox. Can't derive R. Can't use terrestrial refraction to move the horizon with R. Bye bye, globe model. Yeah, I don't think he understands it, Nathan. Of course he doesn't. He's thick. Doesn't understand what geometry is. Doesn't understand what's required. Straight line. He doesn't he's understand he, what he said when he said measurement to the horizon. He actually thinks there is a, an actual measurement to the horizon. Thank you, Paul. A constant measurement. On screen for the audience's benefit. A straight line from Al Baruni's position up the mountain at A to the claim to be tangent point physical geometric horizon with a straight line to draw this triangle. And what's he doing it for? Well, to derive R. And he needs a straight line to do that. Now, what's the rebuttal to the black swan? Well, we don't have a straight line. It's refracted. Oh, well, you know what that means, don't you? Al Biruni didn't have a straight line to do this calculation to get R. And what's that you say? It's refracted with R. Oh, well, you're going to need to acquire R. And it seems that you can't do that if it's refracted. So you don't have an R to refract a horizon that can't be measured. It's a paradox. Thank you for putting that, Paul. Right. Didn't Pickle Rick just basically say you don't need a tangent line no. to a sphere in order to measure R? Yeah, that's when I said he didn't understand what geometry was. Right. That's, like, literally don't understand. Or he just forgot because it's very convenient now because his ball proofs don't work out anymore. Yeah, it's a bummer, isn't it? On, man. I learned that shit when I was eight. Well, so basic, basic geometry. Come on. Go, go on, Paul. He didn't know the distance. He didn't, didn't he say that? I heard him say that. Distance to the horizon. Did I, did I miss that? No, no, I think that was the correct point that he was trying to make. That the, the kind of standard ball of substitutes. No, as Nathan correctly said at the start, he measured the dip angle to the horizon, and what the the measurement he'll have taken is the height of the mountain, um, and then use trig for the rest. But that was, I think, his attempt at making a truth statement to and waffle on. Okay. Okay, so you don't need you don't need to know the distance to the to the horizon. You just need to know the height that you're on the mountain to determine the the right angle part of the, the triangle or the other the side or the I'm sorry the yeah. side that you're missing. Okay, right. I got you. I got you. Okay. Yeah. So just based on your sure picture, like, wait a minute. So from the top line, it, I'll just for the audience's benefit, I'll just show you what I mean. This is his astronomical horizon. So he's got a zenith, i.e., a line from the top of his head down to, in the case of Al Biruni, the centre of what he's going to assume is a sphere beneath his feet. And he's got a height from him to the top of the mountain. Now, with that assumed astronomical horizon, I've got to use their terminology, that's what it's called, he can then get this. I can't see from this distance what it's labelled. It looks like small a. That's the dip angle. That's what he's measuring. From that, he can then calculate with trig the rest of the distances to the horizon, and give him his R value. That's the measurement he wants from this right angle, yeah, for his trig, based on the dip angle from an assumed astronomical horizon to the horizon he can see. That gives him R. That's geometry. Needs a straight line, though, between this point and this point. That's the main point we're making. We show them a horizon that's over here somewhere, and they go, well, the light's being bent. Well, how did you get the R value then, given that 7 over 6 R is how you're saying the light's been bent? How do you get R if it's always bent, if you can never get a straight line? Because if you've got refraction, you've got refraction. 
You can't have it both ways. You can't both have geometry with a straight line capable of being measured and then the assertion that all lines are bent, refracted. So it's I, would the, like people, I would like on. people like to uh, uh, tell us how the origins, uh, first of all, tell us what the origin of his supposed radius value is. And secondly, then tell us about how it wasn't a pre-assumption to start with. Because Al Baruni had to pre-assume he was already on a sphere, on a globe, to come up with the calculation he did. So if yeah. would Pickle Rick, if he's listening, would you please come up to your origin of your radius, radius value? Because if you're saying it's not Al Baruni, no, he said that's the only way. Then at one what stage, is it? at one stage, he said that's the only way. Yeah, he did say that. You're not yeah, going to get any radius. I have a question. That makes me. Go ahead, Paul. If the uh, line between A and C is curved, but you've also got the, the line between B and C is curved, how do you determine an angle? You can't. You can't do geometry unless you've got that straight line. That's the point. And they're and it, rebuttal even, to the do, black swan. Even if you say do, the line isn't straight. A, you can't. Uh, Say, say again, Art. Say again. Even if you do have um, a straight line, you can't have an angle to a point on a circle. It has to be a straight line that you're measuring a, an angle to a straight line. It can't be a straight line to a point because there is no angle to a point. It has to be two straight lines for an angle. Yeah, they, they need yeah, exactly. a straight line. That, that's why I was asking that question. So even technically, from, since you don't have an angle, you can't measure the angle from B to C, can't even it should be a right angle at that point so even that's wrong right so your a would be or your little a would be down with the angle between b and c or whatever i don't know if you understand what I'm precisely <laughs> you like won't get accurate it. exactly you won't get the dip angle correct and it would be different on a different day with that i'm going to say if you are watching this on either nathan oakley 1980 or nathan oakley primary streams then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow unfortunately if you're watching this live this is where we bid you farewell so a huge massive enormous thank you i think there was a couple of super chats that i didn't actually shout out let's just have a quick look uh let's refresh this page see if hopefully they appear if not i'm sure i did see some super chats fly by and i didn't shout them out so i'm really sorry if you did super chat and i don't get a chance to oh here we go rob wiggle says super chat smashed thank you very much indeed and it was actually a new member so a warm welcome to michael jones who's joined as a lion so thank you very much indeed again to all of you who did smash the super chat liked commented shared subscribed and all that good stuff once again stay tuned if you're watching on either premiering stream i've been nathan oakley and a massive thank you to today's discord and g plus panels for making today's live show possible i'll see you all in the next video